Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Isaiah 35, verse 3 through 4 says this, Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Or Micah chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, In that day declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather those who have been driven away. And those who have been afflicted, and the lame I will make the remnant, and those who are cast off a strong nation, and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from this time forth and forevermore. In other words, what this is getting at is that there are not just parts of an individual that are lame, or parts of an individual that are drooping, or parts of an individual that are weak, but that collectively, the body, universal body, the people of God, the covenant people of God, there are individual whole persons within that corporate body that are slow to believe. There are individual persons within that corporate body who are ready to halt. And that's why I love, again, the second volume of Pilgrim's Progress, Christiana, Christian's wife, he's now in glory, and her four children, they pick up people in their company, and some are strong, and some are exceedingly weak. The hero, one of the great heroes of the story, is Mr. Greatheart. And if Mr. Greatheart didn't join their company, they're just not making it. They're not making it. But in God's sovereignty, because he chose to save these individuals, he brings to them a great warrior. And this guy is is saving them out of this problem and that problem and this you know, uh, calamity and and this trial. And and, in one part of of the book, Mr. Greatheart actually rescues a couple individuals, a couple pilgrims uh, from a giant. He actually goes and cuts off the giant's head. Single-handedly kills him. And the guys who are added to the company that, that Mr. Greatheart saves is a guy named Feeble Minded and another guy named Ready to Halt. Right? Not exactly a flattering name. Hi, my name is Mr. Ready to Halt. Right? I'm, I'm ready to, to compromise at any given moment. Right? right? That's like uh, Ready to Halt, you know, Gospel Coalition, Ready to Halt. You know, like, it, you know, just at any moment, any given moment, if there's some kind of, you know, temptation in the culture or whatever, we're ready to compromise. Here we are. Uh, culture engagement. And so that, that's, that's not a good description. That's not who you want to be. That's my point. You don't want to be ready to halt. You don't want to be feeble-minded, right? There's another guy named Little Faith. You don't want to be Little Faith. You want to be Mr. Greatheart, right? We all want to be Mr. Greatheart, but we're not. We're not all Mr. Greatheart. And what I have learned, and this has a lot to do with how we live as individual Christians in community, in the church, in covenant membership, and especially it has pastoral implications, But what I have learned is this, there is a dynamic difference between a false convert and a weak convert. False converts should be chastised, rebuked, and cast out of the fellowship. But weak converts should be consoled and comforted and bolstered up and encouraged and brought even closer in. Remember, Isaiah says of Christ himself, a bruised reed he will not despise, nor a smoldering wick will he snuff out. The smoldering wick, right? The the wick that's barely lit, but barely. That's a Christian. That's not a false teacher. That's not a wolf. That's not a goat. That's a Christian. That's just a weak Christian. The bruised reed is not a broken reed. It's not a snapped reed. It is a reed and it is intact. It's just weak. And there is a difference between a weak convert and a false convert. And the church has to be diligent when it comes to false converts, who we see later in the text, can bring in a root of bitterness and defile many, versus weak converts, who should not be removed from the fellowship, from the assembly, but rather brought even closer in and strengthened. So when it says, therefore lift your drooping hands, It's not just talking about you as an individual follower of Christ. And strengthen your weak knees. It's not just talking about you as an individual follower of Christ. We are on this journey to the celestial city as a team. 
There is no such thing as rogue Christianity. You don't get to go to the celestial city by yourself. God has ordained that you would travel to the celestial city as a pilgrim with a community, with other pilgrims. And we are called to help one another along the way. Strengthen your weak knees. Lift up your drooping hands. What it's saying, make straight paths for your feet. What it's saying is this, as we seek to pursue, to grow this process of sanctification as a corporate body of Christ, there are knees in the body and they may be weak. There are hands in the body that may be drooping. And if we have such, such weak members in the corporate body of Christ, what we should do is strengthen those that are weak and also we should ensure, right, if you have an elderly person, right, you, you have a, an elderly mother or father, right, and you have them over to your home, well, you, you, don't, you don't take a bunch of different, you know, the kids' toys and all these things and, and put them all over the floor in their path, just setting them up to trip and fall and break a hip, God forbid. No, what, what you do is it's like, all right, we, we've got, we've got great grandma coming over to the house. She's 90 years old. You, you make straight the paths. You, you clear any of the potential hindrances. You don't have things laying around on the floor as she's coming in with her walker trying to, to make it to the couch. You make it as easy as possible. That's what our text is getting at. In the corporate sense, not just as rogue individual Christians, but as the church on earth militant, we have members of the corporate body who are knees but weak, hands but drooping. Let's strengthen one another and let's ensure that the path that we're on as we journey together to the celestial city, this journey corporately in sanctification, let's make sure that that path is clear, level, and straight. 